we're going to look at her Verizon bill for the billing period August 14th through September 13th. This bill is still in the discovery. So if you want to go back and look at this for yourself, I believe it's on page 998. But for August 14th um, and through August 16th, she pretty much only speaks with Chris, obviously, on the 14th. And then she speaks with the FBI agent and CBI agent and her mom and dad. She has some random phone calls in between, maybe one or two of other people. But majority of the phone calls, as you guys are going to see or you could see, is her dad. Um, I think it's really interesting that every time she spoke with either the FBI agent, she called her dad right away. Or if they called her, if the FBI agent called her, she called her dad right back. Or when she spoke with Kobach, she called her dad. Or if Kobach called her, she called her dad. It was, it was every time she spoke with anybody from law enforcement, she made sure her dad was aware of what that conversation was. And some can say, oh, well, because maybe she's just, you know, obviously getting the support from her dad. I do understand that. But I just think it's interesting based off what we're going to listen to in the audio in a little bit. On August 15th, 2018, the mistress contacted Frederick PD to come forward and let them know that she was the mistress. And people have said that she came forward on her own free will and that she was trying to help law enforcement out. But keep in mind that law enforcement already knew about the mistress from Tony Husky who was the regional security manager for Anadarko, he had called them and let them know that he had came across these emails between the mistress and Chris and that he believes there was possibly an affair going on between the two. He called law enforcement at, I think it was 8 a.m. in the morning. So law enforcement knew of her prior to her even contacting them. And keep in mind, the night before, on August 14th, Chris interviewed with agent coder and he didn't leave that interview until i believe it was like at 11 at night he did spend the night at his friends and he contacted the mistress at 12 a.m that night and he speaks with her back to back to back to back um and are we to believe that he did not tell the mistress what was going on at all during that interview also chris knew the following morning he was going to go at 11 o'clock to do a polygraph test so I'm going to assume he told the mistress this and I think that's why the mistress was so scared that night and panicking because she knew he was going to go do a polygraph test she didn't know what questions they were going to ask that's why I think the mistress came forward and contacted law enforcement was only because she knew Chris was going to do that polygraph and they were going to find out about her. Her last phone call to Chris was at 2.07 a.m. That's the last communication between the two per the mistress interviews. We don't know if there was text messages after that, if there were recovered, if they weren't, who knows. At 6.50 a.m., she gets an incoming call from her mom and speaks with her for one minute. She's at work at this time. At 12.53 p.m., she calls her mom and speaks with her for only two minutes. At 2.20 p.m., she calls her friend Jim and she speaks with him for three minutes. So this is the last phone calls for August 14th that we have for the mistress per her bill. Then we go on to August 15th. August 15th at 5.41 a.m. She calls her dad and she speaks with him for two minutes. At 6.10 a.m. she gets an incoming call and she speaks with her mom for 23 minutes. At 7.11 a.m. she calls her dad and she speaks with him for one minute. So one can only assume that she's letting her parents know she's going to contact Frederick PD and let them know what is going on because she calls... Frederick Police Station at 9.49 a.m. and she speaks with someone for three minutes. At 9.52 a.m. she calls the police station again and speaks to them for one minute. 
At 11.38 a.m., she calls them again and speaks to someone for six minutes. And then at 12.38 p.m., she gets a phone call. And this is from the FBI agent Mark, and she speaks with him for six minutes. As soon as she's done talking to Mark, she gets an incoming call from her dad and speaks to them for one minute. If we look at the phone call at 9.49 a.m. and that call lasted three minutes and then she calls them back and speaks with someone for one minute, I think possibly right here she's probably calling them and just trying to get information out about the case because then at 9.50 at 11.38 a.m. she calls them back and she does speak with um, someone for six minutes and at 12.38 p.m. when they call her back, that's the FBI agent Mark that calls her back. So that first six-minute phone call where she does call them, I think that's where she's just telling them about who she is and what her relation is between her and Chris. And that's why the FBI ends up calling her. I'm sure there's text messages in between these phone calls or right after these phone calls between um, Nicole and her dad or even her and her mom because it's just as soon as she's done talking to one of the agents her dad will end up calling her and it's kind of like how do you know she's done with this phone call so like I said after she speaks with the FBI agent she does get an incoming call from her dad and then at 1 57 p.m. she gets an incoming call from the FBI agent and speaks with him for one minute at 1.58 p.m., she gets another phone call back from the agent and she speaks with him for another minute. And then at 1.58 p.m. again, so back to back, she calls him and speaks with him for two minutes. Then at 2 p.m., she calls the agent back again and speaks with him for one minute. And then at 3.43 p.m., she calls the agent again and speaks with him for one minute. At 3.44 p.m., she calls that agent again and speaks with him for another minute. And then at 3.45 p.m., she gets an incoming call this time from the agent and she speaks with him for two minutes. So it's kind of interesting. It's these little nuggets of phone calls. One minute here, one minute there, and it's like back to back in a way. And we do know that some of these phone calls are about the FBI agent meeting up with the mistress because she does her first park interview on August 15th at 5.36 p.m. There's something else I want to show you guys. She meets up with the FBI agents at the park at 5.36 p.m. She does get an incoming call from her dad at 5.37 p.m. So I'm guessing that her dad is probably calling her saying, hey, I'm at the park, where are you guys? Because we know he was there with her at that interview, but since her dad met her there based off of that phone call, I'm wondering, did she drive her truck? At 7 p.m., she calls her mom and speaks with her for one minute. Then at 8.35 p.m., she calls her and speaks with her for an additional 17 minutes. By the time she took her park interview at 5.35, was it? Chris at 4 p.m. had gotten the results of his polygraph, which they said he failed. By 4.15 p.m., investigators already sent out the drone and they had spotted the bed sheet at the battery site. Also, on August 15th, the news media was already reporting that Chris was charged with murdering his family. The earliest I can find was 7.25 p.m. So when we look at the 8.35 p.m. on August 15th, when she calls her mom for 17 minutes, I'm going to assume that she's possibly already seen the news media and she's, you know, talking to her mom about that. Now we're moving on to August 16th at 4.30 a.m. She calls her dad and she speaks with him for five minutes. So she calls him, it looks like first thing in the morning. If she even got any sleep, I highly doubt it. At 4.46 a.m. she gets an incoming call from her mom at 6.41 a.m. she calls her dad and she no she gets an incoming call I'm sorry and she speaks with him for 52 minutes that's a really long phone call right there at 7.40 a.m. she calls her mom and speaks with her for one minute at 7.55 a.m. she gets an incoming call from her mom and she speaks with her for seven minutes now, 8.56 a.m., she gets an incoming call from her dad, and she speaks with him for 35 minutes. At 9.30 a.m., 
She gets an incoming call, this time from the agent, the FBI agent, Mark, and she speaks with him for 41 minutes. Now, is it possible that the agent is informing her Chris has been arrested, he confessed to killing his wife? And it's possible that this is where he's informing her that now they need to do a second interview with her at the station. So after she has this 41 minute conversation with the FBI agent, she calls her dad at 10, 11 a.m. and she speaks with him for 40 minutes. Then at 12, 32 p.m. she calls her dad back and she speaks with him for an additional 13 minutes. So you guys can see the duration of minutes between her and her dad have increased dramatically. They went from one minute, two minutes, six minutes to now being 52 minutes, 35 minutes, 40 minutes. So now at 1.01 p.m. she calls the FBI agent and she speaks with him for 12 minutes. As soon as she's done speaking with the agent, she calls her dad at 1.12 p.m. and she speaks with him for one minute. Then we have at 1.28 p.m., this is the first phone call between Nicole Kessinger and Agent Kevin Kobach. He calls her and they speak for nine minutes. After she speaks with Agent Kobach, she calls her dad at 1.46 p.m. and she talks to him for one minute. At 1.53 p.m., Agent Kobach calls her back and they speak for two minutes. Then at 2.02 p.m., she gets an incoming call from her dad and she speaks to him for 14 minutes. At 2.16 p.m., she calls Agent Kobach and she speaks with him for one minute. At 3.07 p.m., she gets an incoming call from someone named Kaylee. I'm not sure if this is her friend or a co-worker, but she speaks to this person for 17 minutes. At 3.50 p.m., she calls Agent Kobach and speaks with him for three minutes. And then at 3.58 p.m., she gets an incoming call from her dad and speaks to him for three minutes. At 4.02 p.m., she gets an incoming call from a tailor. And again, that can be a friend or a co-worker. At 4.10 p.m., she gets an incoming call from her dad and she speaks with him for three minutes. At 4.12 p.m., she gets an incoming call from Agent Kobach and she speaks with him for one minute. After she hangs up with him, she calls her dad at 4.13 p.m. and she speaks with him for one minute. At 4.30 p.m., she calls her dad again and speaks with him for an additional one minute. Those are the only phone calls we have for the 16th. On her bill and unfortunately you guys I couldn't find the time that the mistress did her interview with agent Kobach on August 16th I went through the transcripts for that date and all we have is the date but no time I listened to the audio and it doesn't give agent Kobach doesn't say a time and then I also in the discovery for that interview it also doesn't give a time so I'm going to guess that this interview must have happened after after 4.30 p.m. because she doesn't have any other phone calls after that. Also, something else I thought was important was on August 7th, just a few days before the murders, at 4.33 p p.m., the mistress calls North Glen Police Station. That phone call was only one minute, but she did call somebody at the station and I'm just wondering did she know someone there was she asking questions it's just kind of odd that a few days prior to the murder she's calling someone and at first I thought if she knows somebody there why wouldn't she just call them on their personal cell phone I mean I have friends who work in the law um, enforcement and I don't think I've ever called them at the station I've always just reached out either their cell phone, home phone number, or even social media. So now you know who she was talking to prior to going into this interview with Agent Kobach on August 16th. And I thought it was important to show how much her dad was in contact with her and how much 
contact she had with Agent Kobach prior to walking into that police station and doing that interview. And also, we don't have any records of what these phone calls between her and Kobach were even about because in the discovery, I don't see any reports of any of these phone calls. Again, if you know or have seen these reports and you can give me a discovery page, please comment below, but I personally have not seen it. So now we're gonna go ahead and listen to the interview for August 16th. I'm not gonna play the whole interview, only pieces of where her dad is involved. One of them is a redacted video that is courtesy of Plunder. So now let's take a listen. We introduced ourselves in the lobby and earlier, so we're just gonna do that again real quick. My name's Kevin Kobach, I'm with the Colorado Bureau of Investigation and uh, we're assisting the Frederick Police Department with this case involving uh, Chris Watts. And this is Tim Martinez, also an agent at CBI. Sir, if you just introduce yourself. Uh, Dwayne Kessinger, I'm Nicole's father. Dwayne, what's your birthday? And this part has been redacted because it's personal information. Yeah. What city? That's uh, Arvada, 8004. And a cell phone or a home phone or where? Um, and Nicole, can you just introduce yourself for the recording? Nicole Kessinger. Stuff. Yes, please. I love it. She seems really bothered that she even has to be here. Court. She plays the victim world to the T. You determined it was North Glen, right? Do you know your zip code? 80241. Can you speak up just a little bit so the recorder, I know you're tired and you're stressed um, and we won't be here. Um, just a thing on the courtesy for the phone for, what was that guy's name, Don? This gentleman? Oh. Third PD. I just met him today. <laughs> oh, do you want to do the I phone? I forgot today? about that. For TPD. I it's not for them. They're doing it for us. Yes. We just didn't, we don't have the equipment with us to do it and I asked them to do it for us. They're not involved in this investigation. He would just be a uh, computer person. He would not be looking at any of this stuff. That uh, would fall to myself. So keep that in mind. He's not involved in this investigation. Thornton PD has nothing to do with this, other than letting us use their facility and um, helping us with some electronic download. He's not going to look at your phone right now. He's going to put it on a disc, and they're going to give it to me. Gotcha. Uh, what I really want to help you guys. I do. I feel like um, I'm, this whole thing is just going to be crazy regardless of whether I give you my... Did you guys hear what she tells her dad? She says, what do you think? Meaning, do you think I should give them my phone? phone. Let's listen to that part again and listen how she whispers that to her dad. He's going to put it on a disc and they're going to give it to me. Gotcha. Uh, what do you think? I really want to help you guys. I do. Okay. Help you guys. I do. Okay. I feel like I'm, I'm, this whole thing is just going to be crazy regardless of whether I give you my phone or not. I mean, that's kind of how I look at it. Like it's happening. It's going to happen. Well, the texts Maybe reiterate what gonna... you've been saying all along, so it's not like... Well, they do. That's the other thing, too. I mean, that's kind of a good backup. Yeah, I'll give I it to them. I think you hit the nail right on the head. There's... I actually love how the dad jumps in right there and pretty much says that her text messages are going to be proof of what she's saying all along because you got to remember her dad is believing whatever she's told him prior to going to this interview and then the mistress uh yeah you're right you're right you're right okay I'll give it to you but I believe she doesn't want to hand over her phone because those text messages are going to be complete opposite of what she is saying. This next part of the interview for me is so uncomfortable to listen to because I'm just going to say it. Nicole's dad, Dwayne, totally checks Agent Kobach's beep and Agent Kobach just pretty much drops the questioning and he just moves on to the next subject. Watch. Let's take a listen. And um, that was the final take on that. Yes, I think... I know why he lied to me. He lied to me because if I'd have known that he had a child on the way, I'd have never wasted my time with him in the first place. Like, none of this would have ever even occurred. 
if he had just told me the truth. So do you think if he found out that you, um, if, let's say this week you guys were to go look at some apartments, and this is hypothetical, but you, um, you've never found out that his wife was pregnant, would, would that have changed anything, uh, like you just said? If I knew he was his wife was pregnant, I wouldn't be in this picture. So if his wife was not pregnant, um, and forgive me, but if, if if he takes her out of the picture, you're never going to know that she was pregnant, right? What do you mean takes her out of the picture? Like if he murdered her, she's out of the picture. You're never going to know if she was pregnant. If he can get away with murder, you're not going to. I got divorced from my wife. Do you understand what I'm saying here? If if she's gone, but this don't lead hypothetically, please. Don't lead on. If she, okay. you understand where I'm going. If right, you but didn't you're, know, you're leading into right. questions that are nothing with your. If you didn't know though, wait, Nick. That she was there. Did you hear what I said? I'm not. I'm following you. I just want her to answer a question that relates to. She said something that's important. That if. He didn't have a child on the way, she, or if he didn't, if she didn't know that, she would have continued the relationship, right? But he killed his kids. At what point does he think that I'm gonna I'm be not, in a relationship? I'm not talking about the children. I'm just talking specifically about her. If, if, if you only knew, if the kids were still here, and he called you and said, "I'm divorced from my wife," and he gets away with this. Do you understand what I'm thinking from his aspect? I still wouldn't do it. I still wouldn't do it because I'd be like, where did she go? Okay. Because I'm under the impression that she's a really good mom. Like, he never bashed her mom and skills. Like, he, no, no, I wouldn't, no. Okay. No. And that's, that. you see where I'm trying to take that? Yes. So, he never, you guys never had a conversation about the child, period. I didn't know at all. all right. And by your words, if you did know, you would have ended the relationship. Well, because it wouldn't have made sense to me that he's like, I'm getting separated. Oh, by the way, I have a baby on the way. It's like, it's 15 you are a liar. You're just trying to sleep with me. That's what I would have probably interpreted that as. Now we're going to listen to the redacted audio for me, this part of the audio is very interesting. One, what the dad says to Agent Kobach, and two, that they took this out of the discovery. So let's take a listen. Just on the media we'll stuff, work on that. Yeah, I think you've got a grip on that. Um, on the media stuff, for you, I wouldn't talk to the media just tell them you don't have any comment, and for you, probably the same. And if they just persist, um, you, you know, maybe... Per Put somebody, it seems like your dad is your, your biggest confidant here and maybe make a brief statement if, you know, my daughter doesn't want to say anything, have a nice day, whatever. You know, because if you appease them a little bit, sometimes they'll go away. Um, that would just be my suggestion. Um, don't talk to them. That You don't need to. I'm not going to. I guess they're going to make their own assumptions. But yeah. then so does your neighbor, so does the right. guy in front of the red light. They're going to talk to your neighbor, and they're going to say, oh, yeah, I saw Chris, you know, and her together, you know, whatever. You know what's going to happen. Just prepare yourself, and then it won't be. Are there, they going to, like, swarm my house? No, I don't think so. No, they were, like, swarming his. He told me that he's like, there's media everywhere. And it's just like, I hope that does not happen well, to me yeah. i mean i have like a little i have like a safe house in denver that i can go to that i have the go. keys to that has that's nobody what there that's what ever. We're for the next and it's all weeks. i have to do is check the mail and there's no questions asked and nobody knows where it is and i'm not telling anybody but it's like a really nice spot for me to like hide oh, yeah. out and i don't have any friends in that building i mean it's an apartment but it's and we will safe. answer your phone calls but the safe house is from the safe the, house is the safe people house. banging on her apartment well, door. when should i go there when do you think all this is going to start happening i mean it's Okay, why does it sound right there that she has a smile on her face? Like, does she think this is an effing joke? Safe house is from the safe the house. Is the safe people house. banging on her apartment well, door. When should I go there? When do you think all this is going to start happening? I mean, it's kind of. I mean, 
might be just good for you to go there anyways for your sanity and stay away from this place that you had a connection to this man with and get your thoughts in order. That's so sad. That was my nest. That was like such a warm little place. That was your... Now, it's like I haven't even slept in my bed. I've just been sleeping on the couch with the dog. <laughs> I don't even want to do it. What other questions can we answer before we go? I, I, I don't foresee talking to you again regarding this now in a turn and go, hey, can you ask her another question? Um, and that would be a long ways down the line. I don't think there's anything else. I let you talk for a long time today to get it all out. Um, so we don't have to do this again because I don't want to traumatize you again. Um, but if there is important things that come up, please know that I do want to talk to you about those. Other things that we haven't talked about today, or if something just, I mean, i got to tell them. Just call me. I mean, like, some things I thought were really important. Like, the other day, like, I didn't mention the wedding ring thing, and then I was like, that was really creepy. I should probably tell them about that. And, yeah, the... and you got those cards. I gave yeah, you those um, cards. So you gave me cards, and there was clothing in there. Yeah, I just, I don't care what you do with it all. I just don't want The clothing, want was any of the clothing anything he wore this weekend, or is it stuff that was from... No, no, no. It was, like, stuff that he brought over, like, prior to that, okay. none of that. Like, some of it's been washed and folded since then. Yeah, I just wanted it out of my house and didn't want to throw it away. So Okay, so she says she deleted his text messages, even his phone number out of her phone because she found out Shanann was pregnant and she wanted nothing to do with him. She was so disgusted by him. She didn't want to see anything on her phone from him. So why would she keep his love letters and keep his clothes folded and washed instead of throwing that in the trash? Makes no sense. Take care of that. We have it. We'll take care of that. Um, if I have questions on the context of a text message, I might just call you and say, what the hell does this mean? Because I might not understand what you were talking about, if that's okay with you. Yeah, um, that's fine. If, if it's, I'm not going to bother you unless it's really important, because uh, I think I have everything I need from you today. Okay, yeah, we just want to make sure you guys had it so that well, and we don't, I, I don't find the right person or something and get do it, it done. Again. Yeah, and uh, we know we have right person and I am sorry that you're involved okay I want you guys to listen to that part again Nicole's dad tells agent Kobach that he wants to make sure that they have the right person to get it done meaning he was going to hand over her phone but make sure the right person is handling it and then you have agent Kobach responding it sounds like he's messing with the the speaker in a way or moving it away from him and his agent Kobach's voice goes a little lower to me I don't know it sounds kind of like if I'm gonna speculate right here but it sounds like agent Kobach doesn't want this on record but he says and we know we have the right person what does that even mean and who's this right person they're trying to get the phone to I don't know this part of the interview just doesn't sound right to me Keep in mind, too, this was also redacted from the discovery. I just wanted to make sure you guys had it so that well, and we don't, I, we I don't find the right person or something and get it do done. Again. Yeah, and uh, we know we have the right person, and I am sorry that you're involved. I am. It's never a good time to say anything like that, but it's, it's a bad deal, this whole thing is, and this is one of the tougher cases that I think I've been doing this a long time. It's... You know, it's tough. So for you, it, it's even tougher. And don't forget to reach out to somebody for your, your sanity. Like I told, I asked you downstairs a question and you said no. You remember what question I asked? So that's where the audio ends. There is the rest of that interview in the transcripts. And I'll do a read through of that when it talks about the question and all that stuff. I just didn't want to include that with this video because this one's already going so long. But that redacted video is courtesy of Plunder. She um, talks about it on her channel and she posted a video. And I have never heard that audio before because it has been redacted since they released that second batch of Discovery. It's interesting that they redacted that part of the audio because usually they take out information that 
is personal information like phone numbers, addresses, emails, stuff like that. But in this audio, you listen to it and you're wondering what was so private or what what is it that they didn't want us to hear. But comment below and let me know what you guys think. That's going to end this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that like button. It's just a little free way you can show your love and support for my channel. And I will talk to you guys all soon. Bye.